Hi friends, this is Linda and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today I'm going to show you my October in my Hobonichi cousin for 2023. This thing is getting chunky. We're almost done. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, you guys, like I said, this thing is getting chunky. It's in this cover that I've had for a few months, and this cover is gorgeous and super nice quality, but I don't actually love it because it's kind of hard to write in it with it in the cover. So a lot of times I'm t I remove it from the cover because the Hobonichi Cousin has, and I'm going to remove it right now, this really great binding that allows you to kind of like flip it back on yourself. I have gotten a lot of comments about this where people wanted to know like how I was writing it. You can flip it back fully like this. So say you want to write like I'm just going to go to December 2nd. See how it's so lopsided. This page is so low compared to this one. What you need to do is just flip it like this so that it's fully flat and it's so much easier to write. And the binding in these is designed to be able to do that. So don't worry about um, breaking your spine because it's totally designed for that. I've done it so many times and you can see it is holding up perfectly. This thing is starting to get a little chunky. I have a couple of um, pencil boards in here. These, um, This is the new one that I picked up for 2024 and I just started using it. Um, it's nice to just have multiple at once and I've been using this also as a dashboard for my meal planning rather than putting it on my weekly spread on a sticky note. So let's go ahead and dive right in starting with my monthly spread. Oh actually starting with my trackers here. I did keep up with my tracker in October. I have you can see decided to sort of switch things up in November and I'll talk about that a little bit more later in this video. Um, I didn't finish all of my deep cleaning things but I did get some stuff done. I got my yard done. I deep cleaned my garage which was like something on my list for so 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 long and I'm so happy that it's done and it's one of those things where like it nagged me for like a year and then I spent like two hours and it's done. And yeah, that was that took up my morning, a large chunk of my morning, but I'm so thrilled. And every time I go out to the car, I'm like, oh my God, the garage is so nice. So I need to use that motivation to get more of these things checked off my list. Um, so in October, I was tracking daily planning. So whether or not I used my planner to plan my day, I didn't necessarily mean that I did actually do a full daily page but that I looked at my daily, my weekly, my monthly enough to plan out whatever I needed for that day. Second is journaling. In the second half of 2023, I've been using my Hobonichi Cousin as both a planner and a journal. In 2024, I'm going to be doing that a little bit differently, which I will share my full 2024 lineup soon. I believe probably next week. Um, I have all of my planners in and everything is pretty much set in my head. I just need to do a little bit of setup and film that video, so that should be coming soon. Um, but for the rest of 2023, I'm doing it all in one book. I am designating them as separate activities on my tracker, but you can see they pretty much parallel each other um, because I do tend to do them at the same time. Budgeting, I um, keep track of my finances through a budget spreadsheet on my computer. And I just use this to designate days that I took the time to update that spreadsheet. Um, it is something I am continuing to track because I want to be mindful of checking it, but I don't need to do it every day because if I didn't spend anything that day, there's no re reason to check my budget and update my budget spreadsheet. Create is one that I have switched. Um, I put create to be anything creative. And moving into November, I've split that into creating with paper. So that would be scrapbooking or like artistic journaling or something along those lines, working on one of my journals um, that is a more crafty side of things. And then practices is the other creative thing, which I will talk a little bit more about that later because I do have a daily page all about that. Um, then picking up the house, I have that's the same and that's just like taking 10 minutes to walk around the house and pick up all of the things and just straighten the house. That is something I want to do every day. You can see I don't do it every day, but I'm working on it. 
cleaning the kitchen. I am much better about that, cleaning the kitchen before bed, um, doing the dishes, putting everything away, wiping down the counters. Sometimes I don't do it because I just didn't eat at home, but most of the time I do that if needed. Reading, um, again, I'm, I'm getting pretty good about reading every day. I do skip some days. Um, so far in November, you can see I've done perfect on that, but my goal is to read most days. 10,000 steps, I've kind of been falling off of that, you can see, and that's just because it's getting cold, and I don't really, I haven't used my treadmill in months, so I probably should start getting back on the treadmill and just trying to move a little bit more because that is really good for me, and one way that I stay active is just walking a lot. And now that it's getting colder where I live in upstate New York, that's just not feasible to go for those walks as frequently. Although I am going to try to get one in today because it is in the low 50s. Um, then and then next one was Pilates slash other, which is just doing some other sort of exercise besides um, walking. So for me, that's typically Pilates, but I also sometimes I do go for hikes. I play pickleball. So just different things. Um, at some point I had kept those separate. I think I have, I've combined them, I want to say since, um, July into one because I don't do other exercise often enough to have like different categories for each one. It would take up my entire tracker for all the different things I do. Um, I think in 2024, I probably want a specific tracker to track specifically just Pilates, but not on here. I might use like the, um, here, the 365 check off sheet. I failed miserably at this. I was doing a no sugar one and then I decided that I don't want to not eat sugar and that that was not a good goal for me. So I just kind of abandoned it. But I think next year I do have this in my Hobonichi cousin again. So I think I will probably use it for Pilates specifically because that is a habit that I want to see like laid out like that over the year and hopefully to motivate me to do it more often. But I do like tracking those activities is one column on here because the goal is really just to be active. And then stories was one that I was tracking and that was whether or not I was posting on my Instagram stories, which is something I want to do every day just to stay connected to the community. Even if I'm not posting on Instagram or on YouTube, I like to share something on my stories. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm Linda Loves Creating over there and I do share a lot more about my life on the stories and just like projects in progress, um, photos of my life. I share the connections game every day, just random little things. And I find that that is the best way to connect with the community. So that's just a shameless little plug there if you aren't following me on Instagram. But I was tracking that. You can see I posted every single day in October. In September, I did every day except for one. So I decided to eliminate that in November to make room to split creating with paper and practices into two separate categories. Moving to my monthly. So October, I did not get a ton done cleaning wise. So I, or on my tasks here, you can see they're very much not checked off. That's fine. I still, you know, I was living life. Um, cleaning is not my top priority in life. So, you know, it's something that I want to get done. But if I didn't, that's okay. Um, I have migrated those things to November and come up with a better schedule, hopefully, to try to get some of them done. And I'm hoping to slow down into the winter months that now that I'm not getting outside as much and hopefully have some more time to do that cleaning in the home. Um, as far as how I'm actually documenting um, the month here, I use this purely as a future planning um, and that's what I've been doing for months now. I've used it as future planning where I document like scheduled events or scheduled meetings. Um, you know, like here I went to, for, well, actually that one's different. So here, like my daughter had a doctor's appointment. So I had that in here. I had to go to a training. So I had that scheduled. Then I actually started in October using this to document huge events, not really huge, but like big highlights from the day. So like here I put in 9 a.m. meeting at Thatcher Park playing pickleball. I just wrote that in, even though that was a plan that was kind of just made that morning, um, just so that I knew that that was kind of what I did that day. I liked the, it looking a little more filled out, and I'm going to try to continue that into November. Moving to my weeklies, let's see here. 
no, my tab. So um, I have these tabs here that I used and a lot of people have asked me about them. They are super, super beautiful, but I do not recommend them because they fall off. Honestly, I think I had the October one like a minute ago and I think it just fell off. So um, like a bunch of them had just fallen off. So I'm not going to put those on next year. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put tabs on at all. We'll see. Um, but I'll talk about that in my 2024 lineup video. So moving to my weeklies, um, I, let's see, starting in September, I had gone a little more simple. This week I wanted to be a little bit more decorative. I added a little bit of color and doodle, but my goal with my weeklies is to write down what happened for purposes of project life. That is a project that I do to document my life every week. I put, I have a spread in my project life album. If you don't know what I'm talking about because you are at my channel because of the Hobonichi cousin, it is the way that I do my primary memory keeping um, in addition to keeping a journal, which is more reflective and uh, what I do in here. I use that to document my photos and my memories. And if you are interested, I will link it up at the eye. But basically, I don't document in Project Life as I'm living life. Right now, I actually have been catching up a little bit, but right now I'm working through, um, I think like the first week of October and it is now November. So I wouldn't remember exactly what I had done. So what I do is I document in here as I'm living life, you know, pretty much every day I try to fill in what happened so that I know what to put when I do my Project Life. I also have been including the weather. And then I'm also, because this is both a planner and a memory keeper, I have some chores down here. I'm planning, my meals are more reflective because like I said, I keep a um, list here where I plan out some meals and then I end up writing them down once I realize what I actually do. But um, my chores are obviously pre-planning. My focus is kind of my pre-planning and my tasks and next year those are going to be split into two separate planners which I honestly I can't wait I think that this spread will be a lot less chaotic at that point so then moving into October the second week of October is the first week because this was really just the first I got stickers from the Coffee Monster Co so the Coffee Monster Co is a brand of stickers that are super popular to use in the Hobonichi Cousin run by Helen who is, has the most inspirational um, Hobonichi cousin that one of the best ones that I've seen out there. I mean, I guess best is not really the right word, but it's so inspirational to me. I love her handwriting and her style. So I, I always watch all of her videos and she uses all of her stickers. And at first I wasn't fully drawn to them because they are super cute, but they are all bald, which I don't know why that bothers me, but it bothers me. But as I was struggling with my weeklies and seeing other people use these stickers, I thought, you know, this might be an easier way to make my spread look pretty, but also be simple. Because when I was doing like doodles, this takes longer. And then when I was doing, you know, just writing without doodles, it looks boring. So I needed something a little bit in between. So I decided to order some of the stickers and of course I love them. Um, they are super cute in person. I love how it looks on the spread. I'm super happy to have a little bit of color added in with my highlighters, but mostly just writing and then some stickers. And of course I added some washi to fill in a blank spot. So I really like how that worked. Um, I also got these little um, TV ones from her. They don't have like the emojis, but they're just like a little TV. And I'm using those to document when I start like a new show. Um, or watch a movie because for my media journal, that's an easy kind of signal to me for when, what date I need to put and what um, images I need to print for my media journal. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a whole video about my media journal that um, I can link up at the eye. And that is a journal that I'm keeping this year to document all of the media I consume. So you can see I continued the same style moving forward. Um, this was my birthday week, so I put this, like I did a little bit more doodling for that, but pretty much I'm just, you know, writing down what I did and um, adding in the emoji stickers to decorate it. This week I decided to use like this tan color um, rather than doing a rainbow, but then I realized like I had done the gray for the base and I hate the tan and gray together. I don't know why I did that. So the next week it looks much better. I just went with the tan 
and I added this beautiful washi tape from the Coffee Monster Co. Um, that is like a Halloween or like fall themed one, which I love so much. It's so pretty. So I kind of liked the idea of adding a washi tape on there. I've gotten super into washi tape recently. So I've been doing that to kind of add a little bit more decoration to my weekly spread. Here you can see I have one from Everyday Explorers that is just more colorful. And because that's more colorful, I went back to the gray and again, adding in the emoji stickers. Um, I think that this is probably going to be a similar style that I stick with for the rest of the year, except I'll give you a quick peek because it is partially October. This spread is going to be very different because I'm doing time blocking, which I will talk about in my November flip through video. So look forward to that one. Moving to the dailies. So for October, and I did share this on my Instagram earlier this month, the um, intro page I tend to use for goals. And I have found that monthly goal setting for me doesn't work very well when it comes to life. For crafting, it does work very well, but for like life goal setting, it doesn't because I do have annual goal setting. I do have like my monthly chores and everything. And besides just rewriting my chores on here, it's not very productive and I tend to not check back in with it. A month is very short. Um, it feels very short to me because of the way my work schedule is. And I kind of have like these dead days, I guess is what I call them when I go to the office and I just pretty much work like for 10 hours and then I'm just like dead. So I don't really do anything on those days and that's like half my month. So for me, I am kind of feeling like a month is not very long to really accomplish anything and I tend to get very discouraged. So I'm trying to move away from monthly goals. I think next year I might do quarterly goals, but we'll see. But for um, this page, I wanted to do something. So instead of doing goals, I decided to do a bucket list. And these are like fun things I wanted to do. And there wasn't really any like pressure to do them all. So I didn't really like force myself um, to like do things if I wasn't feeling it. But basically I added 10, 11 things that I wanted to do. And then I came back in and journaled about them and added date stamps when I actually did some of these things. And I can see like I actually did more of these. I need to come back in and fill it in a little bit more towards the end of the month. I took another hike. Um, so I should add a little bit more, but this is pretty much, I, I loved how this turned out. I think I'm going to do something similar in November, but I haven't yet set it up. I will probably do that after I'm done filming this video. Then moving into the daily pages. So I tend to follow a very simple format where I have a column of my tasks and then a column of journaling, but I do add like decor. I add in other things. I'm kind of just like all over the place a little bit, which is sort of my style. So you can see like I moved into Monday, it was very similar. And then if I have like a lot of blank space, I print stuff I find online that I find inspirational. I add, so like these were stickers that came off of new washi packaging. So I add like ephemera in here, just like all sorts of random things to fill in the page. On the third, I had a blank day and I ended up using it to make a list of how to journal daily, which are kind of like my tips for starting a daily journaling practice. And I do have a full video about that. So if you're interested, I will put link that up at the eye for you. Um, but basically I had 10 tips about specifically starting a daily journaling practice, which is something that I really dove head first into in 2023 and I'm going to continue in 2024. So if that is something that you're interested in, definitely check that one out. I'm sorry, I do have to cover up some like personal stuff, but here I didn't do any planning. So instead I just did some journaling and did it all the way across. It didn't fill up the full page. So I added in a um, horrible ID picture that I needed to get from work. Um, and then, cause I accidentally left my badge on my desk. And then I had printed out like a meme right here that I, so what I do for printing stuff is every few weeks or so I print media stuff from my media journal and I print things that I like have saved like screenshots and stuff that were inspiring to me and then I will have that to pull from I think I'm, no you know I don't have any in here right now but sometimes I will keep them like in here if I have extra ones I'm probably going to print some stuff today so I don't have any right now in my backlog but then when I'm like journaling a page if there's like a gap I'll go look and see if I have something that kind of fits that day and fits that space 
Thursday was a pretty standard day. Um, I also like to add things cut out of magazines. I've gone back and forth on doing that. I took quite a big break from doing it just because it's so time consuming to cut things out of magazines and it's hard to organize them. But that is something that I really enjoy doing. I enjoy the process. So I um, decided to, you know, really make time for it. And that's something I'm going to talk about when I get to my practices page. Here's a quote I really like. Daily gratitude journaling has the same impact on happiness as doubling your salary. And I just wrote that down because I saw it in a YouTube video and it kind of spoke to me. Um, I wish I had written who said it, but it, you know, it was a fact, not really like a quote. Um, but I think that it is very important to me to kind of like check in with why I am making the time to journal daily and how important that is to me. This, I just added, this was from like the Hobonichi um, packaging for my new 2024 Hobonichis. Um, longer journaling today. And then this is my bedtime brain dump. I think you've probably seen this on a few of the pages and I've done it in previous months. But right before I go to bed, sometimes, you know, I have a lot of thoughts in my head of like, these are things I have to do tomorrow or things I'm thinking about. And I just take the time to kind of like write the list of like just a brain dump right before bed so that I can get those thoughts out of my head before going to sleep. And it helps me sleep a little bit better because I do struggle from insomnia. Here, um, I started adding some more washi in here. Like I said, I've gotten super into washi tape again. It was something I was super into um, a long time ago when it was really big in the scrapbooking communities. And it's kind of died down in favor in scrapbooking. But it is super big in planner and journal communities for good reason. Like washi tape is amazing. And that's kind of motivated me to pull my stash back out and actually add to it. So I've been using more washi tape in here. Here, um, you can see I'm not fully planning um, tasks list as much as I have in the past because I'm trying to just write down like what I can, what my priorities are, what do I have to do? And then like here I was writing things that were not priorities, but things that I wanted to do that I knew I would get to rather than listing out everything under the sun and then feeling bad when I don't accomplish it all. It's the day before my birthday, so some journaling. And then I didn't use this at all on my birthday, which is the 10th or the next day. So I had like this blank spread. Um, so I decided to kind of list out the things that I want to do daily, monthly, weekly, and biweekly, just to kind of get like an idea for categories and things to put in my planner. So at this point in time, I my 2024 planners had arrived. I am still thinking through setting them up. I'm still thinking through it today. But I'm using this planner and a lot of like the blank spaces in this planner to brainstorm ideas for how I want to set those planners up. And I know that's a lot of planning about planning, but planning, in addition to being functional and great for my mental health, is also one of my hobbies. And so I enjoy planning my planners as I know a lot of others in the community do as well. So that you will see quite a bit of that in here. Um, I had found myself like wanting to buy a bunch of stuff. So I just made a list of all these things that I wanted to purchase um, because I wasn't going to just buy them all at once. And, you know, just getting it out of my head was nice. Um, I got this stamp for my birthday of my cat pumpkin. It was like a personalized stamp. It is a pic it is like a photo of his face. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's super fun. But I just stamped it here to test it out. And I will probably put that on some other pages just to kind of be like a filler and decoration. Um, let's see here again with the washi tape, journaling, to-do list, adding in some ephemera. Um, I use sticky notes a lot to add like smaller like collections, I guess, in here or random notes. Um, I've been using these craft ones pretty frequently. And then I got a new order of washi tape in, so I wanted to swatch them all. These were some a fall set that I purchased on Amazon. Once it came, I feel like I don't love it as much as I did online. Looking at them, I do like like some of the individual ones. I really like like this one, this one, this one, maybe this one, I guess. But some of these, I'm not a huge fan, which is why I'm not typically a fan of buying packs. I probably should not have purchased them, but you live and you learn. 
Here's me like listing out some ideas for my common planner again. Um, here I went back and made a list of like my 2023 planners and journals um, because I just wanted to kind of do an inventory of what I had used and what had worked and what hadn't worked. The 16th, I got, again, another pack of washi tape. I had ordered two at the same time on Amazon. This one I do like a little bit better, but again, I don't love like all of these. Like this one, I probably won't use very much. So, you know, I, I regret kind of purchasing them in packages. Here's a completely blank page. I will probably come back and fill it in at some point in time. Um, at the end of the year, I plan to do a full flip through of the entire planner. And then you will probably see the ones that I've gone back to fill in longer after the month. So then I got more washi and I, you know, commented on how much washi I bought. These ones were from Everyday Explorers and I bought them each individually and I love them all. These are amazing. And this just goes to show like why it's so important to pick out specific ones rather than buy random sets on Amazon. Of course, the price point also you know there's a big difference but I love these and it's worth it to me I'm adding more magazine clippings my journaling my task list washi so here's my practices page this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about so I have if you don't um I feel like did I even get to that yet no um, I feel like this actually goes here. So I had skipped this page. I hadn't filled it in. It's living life. And you can see here on the 21st, I am feeling burnout so bad. And I have a lot of insomnia. And so I made like notes about why I had my insomnia and like working through it. Um, but then, you know, it was just, it was a rough week. And I made a note here to myself. I started journaling. I needed a perspective shift. So I started to think about like what I really need and what is causing so much anxiety and stress for me. And one of the things I identified is that I have all these ongoing projects that don't have an end. So I decided to kind of rename these in my mind as practices. These are not tasks that I want to catch up on or I want to complete. The process itself is the practice. And so I made a list of all of these things. And my goal for me personally going forward and just is to change this as a mindset that these are practices there is no goal to finish them so for example my media journal my media journal i'll give you guys a quick preview here i document reflections on media that i consume i have a lot of of ones that i have not done that's okay there is no goal to finish this because i am going to continue consuming media and every time I watch a movie, I don't want to feel guilty about my media journal is not caught up. Here's another thing I have to add. Who cares? The goal is to document what I do. And, you know, if I have reflections on this book, that's great. If I don't have reflections on this book, that's okay. At least I did this one. So that's fine. What I'm going to do is just start fresh in 2024. Whatever I haven't finished in here, I'm just going to put it on the shelf and be fine with it. Move on. I have some other ones in here, like my stamp organization. I have most of my stamps organized in stamp binders. I have a full video about that as well, but I continue to purchase stamps. Um, I don't spend as much time on it as I should to document, to catalog all of my stamps. Um, and I'm just reframing it in my mind. Yes, it would be nice to have all my stamps catalog, but I'm gonna buy more stamps. And I don't need to finish it. I just want to get as many cataloged as possible because then there, there's a reference. So a lot of these things, I just wrote out all of these practices that I'm going to stop putting these things on my to-do list. These are not things that are to, to do. They are not tasks to check off. They are things to do because I want to do them, because I like the ultimate goal, because I enjoy the practice of them. So rather than having them be tasks to check off, it is going to be finding time in my schedule to devote to my practices and not focused on what have I accomplished, but rather have I made time for myself and space in my schedule for my practices. So going all the way back to my trackers here, I made a column for practices and I am just basically 
putting, filling that out when I have made time in my schedule for practices. That doesn't mean that I accomplished much. That doesn't mean that I, you know, hit a milestone with them, just that I have the time in my day to work on them. Some of these are more, you know, like productive, like my file organization, my digital file organization, and some are more purely for fun, like scrapbooking or journaling, but they all kind of fall into the same category for me of things that I want to make time for because of the process itself. So I'll just read my list too quickly. It's journaling, my media journal, my commonplace book, my stamp organization, my cross-stitch project, nonfiction reading, digital organization, file organization, like physical, I'm playing the piano, scrapbooking, home organization and decor, and fiction reading. A lot of these are things that I do want to do regularly, but I'm just reframing them in my mind to take that pressure off. These are not tasks to be checked off. And if that is something that you needed to hear too, um, I'm just wanting to reiterate here because I feel like some people also need to hear this. And if not, then that's great. And I know not everyone is like me with all of these things they want to do all of the time. But just in case that is you, I'm hopeful that this will help you. So moving forward, we are almost to the end of October. Here again, more journaling. Like this was before I had made this list. So I had a very rough week, so I'm feeling the burnout, reasons for my insomnia, journaling about how rough my insomnia was and how much I'm struggling, my hyperfixation on cross-stitching right now, and just kind of like working through my feelings about all of this, along with making my task list, which I didn't get to everything totally fine. You can see here too, I'm blocking out my tasks. I used to do like subcategories where I would have tasks about like, my daily tasks, life, crafts, home, like different categories. Now I'm doing them based on priority. So my daily tasks are like the things I want to do every day just to kind of keep them in the front of my mind. And then these were like the priorities and these are things I would like to get to, but I don't need to. And this one I had the same where it was like priorities, things I would like to get to, but I don't need to. And the things I would really like would be fun to make time for, but you know, again, I don't need to. Here, I actually mapped out a New York Times Connections puzzle because I was really struggling with it this day, but this really helped. So if you are really wanting to um, do better and succeed on the, that game, mapping it out sometimes does help. Adding in more uh, magazine clippings. This day, I put this washi on here because I was super tired and I took my journal with me out of the house and I was like, so like, I'm going to make time to journal, but I put this washi before I left the house thinking like, you know, this is like the mood I want and I don't want to bring the whole roll with me. And then I just never did it, which is fine. But, um, now I have a blank page that has this washi, which is totally fine. I'll still probably use it, but I thought that was kind of funny and tells the story itself. So here is my perspective shift page where I'm doing some reflective journaling on, you know, my burnout and needing a break and what that really means for me. And here's my bedtime brain dump of like my priorities for the next day, other goals and other random thoughts of things that I might want to do. Here's my Thursday. So this is where I really switched to my today's priorities and then goals of other things. And these are spaced based on their priority. Journaling Friday, so here, um, Taylor Swift's 1989 came out and this I want to point out because typically I don't put anything on the pages until that day. So like if you flip ahead like into December and November, these pages are blank, but I've started actually adding stuff. So I added these weeks in advance when she announced that 1989 was coming out. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put it on that day. And I got over the like, what if... I'm not wanting that on my page when I got there because you know what? It, it was fun. It was, it was part of my day and I knew it was happening. So I did the same here for Thanksgiving. I've added this for November. I don't know what I'm going to put on Thanksgiving. This might end up just being journaling. I might have a to-do list. Who knows? But I like that I just started it because I had that word. I found it in a magazine, wanted to include it rather than just putting it aside. Like I know that's Thanksgiving 
even if I don't end up even celebrating Thanksgiving, I still want to acknowledge it. So I'm happy to kind of put stuff like that ahead. Here I use this washi tape that is from um, Everyday Explorers to just do a little bit of reflective journaling um, based on these prompts, which I thought was super fun. Here was another day that I totally skipped. Um, I had printed out this Instagram post that I saw. It's a quote, you can see the person who wrote it here. And it was just talking about success and what that means to this person. It really resonated with me. So we printed it out, but it was kind of large and I didn't really have it to like fill in like blank spaces on a page because it takes up so much space. So I decided to just frame it with some washi tape and make it its own spread. And I really love how that turned out. I might do that some more in the future. Here, um, here's a Sunday, my Sunday vibes, just like random journaling task list. And then this was actually a bedtime brain dump, but I didn't have like a ton of space left, so I didn't make really a title for it. Instead, I wrote, I want to do all the things because that was just kind of how I was feeling. My same journaling to-do list, just having fun with different headers and washi. And then Halloween, I was super busy and I didn't even get in here, which happens frequently for me, but typically I'll fill in a couple pages at once. But because it's so early in November, I just haven't gotten to this one yet. So that is a look at how October came out in my Hobonichi Cousin. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And as always, I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye.